Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from the penultimate round of the 2022 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. It's Sam Shanklin versus Sergei Karyakin and uh, this game uh, very nicely shows how in modern times it's not enough just to uh, follow the moves. You also have to be following the tweets from the players themselves uh, about their own games but uh, about the other games as well. And then it's uh, all the more enjoyable. So uh, to, uh, not to dwell too long on it, uh, here I'm just going to share a tweet with you that Sam Shanklin posted yesterday uh, after his very very quick draw uh, against Yang Shishtov Duda. He said, not proud of what I did today. Sadly, when you play black, you don't always have a choice. Still, this was not a good example to set. Uh, maybe um, inspired by all the uh, negative attention that that really quick draw between Magnus and uh, Karyakin got, um, uh, he, he he felt it was necessary to apologize for uh, for su uh, su such a short draw. Uh, but now uh, he's playing against Karyakin, and uh, here uh, more action uh, is happening on Twitter. But we are going to uh, visit this at around move ten. So let's check it out. Shankland with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6. We have c for e6, knight to c3, and again, bishop to b4. Seems everyone prepared the Nimzo Indian for, for this tournament. And uh, as usual, queen to c2 and e3 are the top moves here. We've seen the uh, immortal dodge game uh, between uh, Fan Forest and uh, Anish Giri, where a3 was played. That also went very well for white. But here we have f3. This is the Kmoch variation. And uh, well, it is also not without poison, as you'll see. So c5 by Karyakin, uh, striking in the center. We have d5, grabbing more space. And now b5 trying to uh, weaken the, the center if you capture here then black can capture on d5 so here e4 this is what white wants of course we want to grab the full center and now d6 and here uh, bishop to d2 so just continuing development with a6 and now a4 challenging that b5 pawn and now you really have to capture because there's too much pressure so b captures on c4 we have bishop captures on c4 and now knight b to d7 uh, giving up the, the e6 pawn but this is all uh, very standard stuff we D captures on e6, F captures, and now bishop captures on e6. So for the moment, preventing black from castling, but now knight to e5, putting a lot of pressure on that white king, knight to d3 check will be very unpleasant if it happens. So here we have bishop captures on c8, black has to recapture the piece, queen captures on c8, and now bishop to f4. Uh, putting pressure on the knight, but also the queen now regains control of the d3 square. Uh, and now c4. So this is all very standard stuff. Yes, black is down a pawn, but this has been thoroughly analyzed and black is very much okay here. Uh, bishop captures on e5 by Sam, d captures, and now knight to h3. Uh, uh, you have to develop the knight somehow. If you play knight to e2, then queen c5 is very annoying. You'll, you, you will not be able to castle. The queen can come to e3. is just a bad position for white. So instead, after d captures on uh, e5, we have knight to h3 by Sam, uh, and now uh, this is now um, uh, very, very tricky, as there are a couple of games that reach this position, but it was uh, at this position that um, Jan Nipomnici actually tweeted, uh, and he said, uh, I just wonder if Sam Shanklin will apologize for going uh, for more or for a more or less known drawish line with white. Of course, if Karyakin uh, will recall a few precise moves. Hashtag Tata still chess, saying that, uh, okay, um, uh, kind of trolling Sam for tweeting yesterday that he went for a quick draw with the black pieces, but now he's kind of going for a draw with the white pieces. Uh, but notice this, how he uh, says, uh, of course, if Karyakin will recall a few precise moves. And here, uh, you really do have to make some precise moves. So here, Karyakin plays bishop to c5. This is perfectly fine. Uh, and uh, also, it's a new move in the position. Rook to b8 is also... Uh, uh, consider, but bishop to c5 is a new move. So now, as of move 15, we have a completely new game. Uh, and now, queen to e2. Uh, we have rook to b8, so switching the move order a little bit, putting pressure on the b2 pawn. Uh, and now, of course, you can't capture on c4. If you capture here, bishop f2 check, you pick up the queen. I hope none of you were considering that. Uh, so here, knight to f2. Now we, we are ready to castle kingside. And now uh, you have to play bishop to d4. This is kind of the idea behind uh, all of this. But Karyakin played queen to b7. And now it's uh, a, a most interesting position. Wh what can you play here? Obviously, now uh, it's a little bit different. 
uh, you can capture on C4, and uh, perhaps you even should, but uh, that would be a completely different game. Uh, the difference is um, uh, Shankland Castle here first. Now, the difference is uh, black doesn't have to capture the pawn. Black can also just play queen to B4 or, or, or something else. But here, Karyakin captures the pawn, and now the position is winning for white. It's a very tricky move, uh, and it's not easily uh, spotable. So feel free to pause the video and win this game for Shankland while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on spotting this, uh, well, peace sacrifice. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen captures on c4. That's the good stuff. You have to give up the, the knight here uh, because there's really not all that much black can do now. So bishop captures an f2 check is played. Now, of course, white cannot capture the bishop because you're going to lose the rook on a1. So king to h1. Uh, and now again, uh, what can you play here? The the black king is not uh, going anywhere from the center of the board. You can't bring this rook into the game. It's a very, very ugly position to have with black. And here we have queen to b3, uh, offering a queen trade, but now queen to c7. Uh, and this is the move Karyakin says that he missed uh, during his, uh, well, uh, analysis um, uh, uh, during the game. And now uh, you really have some problems with black. The problem is now if you castle, and it seems like a perfectly fine idea because okay rook a to b1 is the threat but if we castle then we connect our rooks uh here shanklin would have a brilliant brilliant queen sacrifice if uh, karyakin castles here then we play rook a to b1 and now after queen to f7 offering a queen trade now shanklin plays queen captures on b8 and uh, beautiful just a beautiful move uh rook captures now rook captures on b8 with check and now you have to block knight to e8 rook captures on f2 and yes you have two rooks and a knight for uh, against the queen and the knight uh, but the position is hopeless for black. For example, g6, we have to create some breeding room for our king. Knight to d5 now. Let's say king g7, you want to unpin. Now comes rook fb2, threatening rook to b7 to pick up the queen. So king h6, and now you're just going to play rook to b7, attack the queen. Queen e6, uh, and now, okay, we could start with rook to e7, that's very strong, but then you allow some queen to c6 with some threats of uh, queen to c1. So let's say h4, and now finally after you save the knight, knight to d6 now we play rook to e7 and we trap the queen so there are uh, a lot of winning lines for white here and the black cannot get out of this so uh, this is probably what karyakin missed so he tried queen to b6 but this also doesn't help we have queen captures on e5 by shanklin king to f7 and now knight to d5 and uh, here was the i think at around this point uh, nepo tweeted uh, his second tweet saying that uh, he, he he jinxed it a little uh, and that's uh, that's some uh, very good Twitter action right there. Uh, and now after knight to d5, uh, again, the position is lost, but you could lose it um, uh, straight up, or you could just try and put up more uh, more of a fight here. Knight captures on d5 was played, and that's completely uh, uh, lost for black. I will show you a, a, a more durable line with queen to a7. Now, okay, you uh, keep uh, try and keep an eye on everything. You're guarding the e7 square. You're guarding uh, the, the rook on b8 sufficiently. So what can you do here? Obviously, rook captures on f2. That's the stuff, uh, and we don't carry if the queen captures on f2. So if the queen captures on f2, then we just go after the king. King uh, Queen c7 check, king g6, now we go knight e7 check, uh, king to h5, queen to e5 check, and that's just very sad. King h6, queen f4 check, king h5, now g3, and there is no defense against queen to h4. So what you would have to do after rook captures on f2, uh, you can't capture the rook, you have to move, bring the rook into the game, uh, but even this uh, doesn't re really work. Queen c7 check. Uh, you force a queen trade, and after captures, captures. You're just up two pawns, and of course, uh, uh, Shankland will win this endgame against Karyakin. So after knight d5, uh, okay, queen to a7 is uh, a bit more resilient, but knight captures on d5 is played, and this is just lost. Queen captures on d5. King e7, we have queen back to e5, check king f7, and now rook a to c1. And it was in this position, on move 26, that uh, Sergei Karyakin resigned the game and Shanklin gets his first victory of the tournament. Uh, even though he uh, did not play, uh, you know, poorly at this tournament, he played incredibly well, got some very strong draws, um, uh, for example, against Magnus. Uh, but uh, so far he was on minus two. Now he gets his first win and he uh, can maybe win the uh, final game to uh, finish the, the tournament on 50%. On so uh, 
uh, really uh, a welcoming win for him. And now uh, you can't really do anything about this. Rook to c7 check is coming. If you block, prevent this with rook to b7, then we just play queen d5 check. And after king to e7, we play rook to c6. There's not much you can do here. Queen d8, we're going to play rook e6 check, king f7, and now just a discovery here, winning everything. Uh, that's it. Uh, or, or if king e7, we can even checkmate uh, the king right away after king f8, uh, rook after d8 will be checkmate. So there is really not all that much you can do here after rook a to c1 he resigned it's so hopeless that the top engine move here is bishop to g3 uh, but uh, you know engines can sometimes be funny without even realizing it uh, so that's uh, uh, how hopeless uh, a position is uh, so yeah, a brilliant game by sam shankland and uh, i would once uh, again like to point out uh, this um, uh, part of uh, of nepo's tweet uh, that says uh uh, if, of course, uh, Sergei Karyakin will recall a few precise moves. So as you can see, uh, in top-level chess, it's not all that easy to recall a few precise moves because players are bombarded with lines. They have to memorize millions of lines. Uh, when I say millions, I, I mean really a lot of lines. Uh, and then, of course, you will not uh, be able to, to recall uh, everything at the r exact right moment. So here, very nicely done by Sam. We'll see what happens uh, in the other games. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mike McCafferty, Deepak Bhatt, Robert Araton, Vladimir Radenkovic, uh, and Sakashi Ranade for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this spectacular tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.